This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So, having gone through and looked at the conceptual framework, we're now going to go through and look at the regulatory framework. So, we need to ensure that the, the framework that we've seen in terms of the conceptual framework uh, meets the needs of the users, doesn't it? So, therefore, what we need to have is we need to have regulation of that framework. Okay, so, so who goes through and performs that regulation? Because if not, we're not going to have a set of high quality IFRSs or IASs that are developed and are maintained and improved into the future. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to have the, this regulatory framework in place. And, and the regulatory framework is overseen by the IFRS Foundation. Now, the IFRS Foundation is, is the overseeing body of all of the standard setting entities, being the ISB primarily, the IFRS Interpretations Committee, and the IFRS Advisory Council. Um, the IFRS Foundation is, is a not-for-profit entity whose role is to go through there and promote and facilitate adoption of IFRSs worldwide. Okay, so not just within your developed countries, so the likes of the UK, America, France, but going through there as well and looking at countries that are not as well developed, that, that don't have so such rigorous accounting standards from their own national accounting standard setters. Okay, so whether that's in Africa, whether that's in the Middle East and Asia, uh, we're trying to promote a set of consistent accounting standards that allow transparency, accountability, and efficiency in their application all around the world. Because if we look at the world now, we're global, aren't we? Okay, all these investors, uh, the, the, the current investors, the future potential investors, aren't just investors from your own country. They are investors from all around the world. And they need to make decisions about the resources that are under your control about the liabilities that you have so they would like to go through there and see that they are developed on a consistent basis using the conceptual framework but that is then governed by an overseeing body being the IFRS foundation okay what the IFRS foundation does is then goes through there and make sure that it's got the international accounting standards board that goes through there and is responsible for the development and the publication of the IFRSs. So all of the, the, the technical matters effectively uh, that are needed to deal with to produce those financial statements. Okay. Uh, so what you've got there is that the ISB can't do that by itself. It needs support, doesn't it? Uh, so it's supported by the Interpretations Committee. So that's the helping the ISB develop interpretations that help users or sorry help the preparers of the accounts in terms of the application of those IFRSs so when we have a new accounting standard it's very important there isn't it that we can implement that new accounting standard so there might be intricacies within it that are quite technical quite difficult to follow so the interpretations committee will go through there and support that in terms of preparing that new IFRS Likewise as well, the ISB, although it's responsible for those technical matters, also is supported by the Advisory Council. I think it's quite literal, isn't it, in terms of what they go through and do. They offer advice with regards to the technical agenda, so helping them with, with maybe some specific technical issues, uh, looking at the different projects and what is more important than others. So obviously recently we've had financial instruments, revenue leases. Uh, also in terms of the application, uh, and the implementation that there might be, so advising them on what the issues may be, so the interpretations committee they can then come up with a solution, uh, and also what are the, the benefits of the new proposed standard, uh, what are the costs of implementation, because if you look at IFRS 15, IFRS 16 leases, yes, there's great benefits to be had from it, and that we get improved revenue recognition criteria, but there's going to be massive costs in terms of the education of the accountants who are working within the entity and the updating of the systems. How do we then communicate the changes within the standards to, to the general public and the, the investors you know, so that they can see why there's been changes and why there are differences? 
Uh, so it's really important that the ISB has that support. And my purpose here is just to give you a very brief overview. I don't want to go in and spend time and time and time talking you through it. You've got your study text, which you can go through there and read. And if you follow the website link that you've got there, you've got a really good bit of information, uh, source documentation straight from the IFRS website. So the IFRS Foundation, IFRS.org, so www.ifrs.org, gives you huge amounts of information there that you've got about who the IFRS Foundation is, a little bit more there in terms of what we said about them developing those financial reporting standards around the world in terms of transparency, accountability, efficiency. Likewise as well, uh, you can go through there and look specifically on the right hand side, is it the ISB? So if you go into the International Accounting Standards Board and click on there, now what you can go through there and see is what the ISB actually does. Okay. Uh, who they are, who the members are, how they are set up, how they are approved to be a member on that board. I think if you then look at the following pages within the notes, uh, it talks about the standard setting process and the work plan. So if you go into the standard setting process, I've given you, you know, a summary effectively of the standard setting process. I've given you a summary of what you've got there with regards to the work plan but, you know use the resources that you have available to you there's a great video there uh, to go through and just have a look at how the IFRS's are set okay uh, how do we go through and set those brand new standards uh, also as well you've got the work plan so the work plan effectively is a summary of all of the projects that are currently being undertaken by the International Accounting Standards Boards. Okay, so you've got all of the different projects there. They're, they're separated out into a research project, uh, a standard setting project, uh, a maintenance project, so updates and improvements, and then any other projects. Okay, so what you'll see now is given that we've got revenue out of the way, financial instruments out of the way, leases out of the way, they were the big major projects that, that you had, you'll see there that there aren't many standard setting projects that are currently taking place. Okay, uh, the big one I suppose that's left to deal with is the management commentary and rate regulated activities. <laughs> Sounds far too complicated, but if you want, you can go through there, click on them uh, and have a look at what is within there. Okay, I think the important ones at the moment for you not to get involved in, but just to, to read and get an understanding or just identify what they are, are all the RPs, okay, the, the research project. So we're looking at how that standard is operating, researching into its application, researching into its output and whether or not that is meeting the qualitative characteristics, meeting the definitions, the elements, of the financial statements, using appropriate measurement bases and whether or not the we need to make updates to it. So, there's, as you can see, that there's huge amounts going on within there, aren't there? Okay. Uh, so, you've got that to look at, your work plan. That takes more importance when it comes to SBR, so the old ACCA P2 paper. Don't forget to go through there and have a look at the video that you've got there in terms of the IFRS standards and how to implement them. Uh, if we go back, uh, to the ISB, and we can then go back one further, can't we? Uh, in terms of the, the who we are about us, again, it gives you a little bit of more detail about the IFRS Interpretations Committee. So you've got plenty to go through there uh, and have a look at. Again, there's another short video uh, to go through there and have a look at what the IFRS Committee does. You probably start there thinking, where's the advisory council? Uh, I think, let me try and remember. I think if you go, no, not into the our constitution, funding annual report, history. No, if we go to the about us, where is it? If we go into the ISB, 
International Accounting Standards Board. Resources. So again, more resources there in terms of setting standards. So I think if you keep going through, uh, I think I've, I've ultimately found it. Uh, if you go back to the, the web link that we put in there. So was it the, the about us and who we are? If we go in there uh, and on that about us page, if you look at the structure of the IFRS foundation uh, and the consultative bodies, uh, it talks again a little bit about the foundation, the ISB, the interpretations committee, and then you've got there, is it the IFRS advisory council? Okay, so that goes through there and gives you little bits and pieces. Another video uh, to go through there and watch with regards to the advisory council. Okay. Don't spend too long upon it all, though. I probably just watched those videos about the advisory council, about the standard setting process. And once I've done that, I'm thinking, hang on a minute. I need to move on. Okay. Uh, because what you're going to go through and get is just maybe a multiple choice question uh, within the exam. Uh, so let's just go through there and have a look at these. Uh, so it says, which of the following is a duty of the IFRS interpretations? committee uh, okay Chris uh, bu -bu -bu. I just had a bit of a mind but I couldn't remember the answer needed to check uh, so if you just can go through there and I think I said uh, let's just go through and have a look at the examples might be a multiple choice question okay so just add this on from there so let's go through and have a look at this first question all about the regulatory framework uh, this one here asks us which of the following is a duty of the IFRS Interpretations Committee. Okay, so we're looking there uh, at one of the bodies that sits there within the IFRS Foundation. So you've got the IFRS Foundation itself, the ISB, the Advisory Council and the Interpretations Committee. Okay, uh, so, so what you've got there, let's work bottom to top and you'll see why in a moment. Is because D, promoting the use and rigorous application of IFRSs, that's the responsibility, is it, of the foundation. Uh, C is to go through there, gather views that supplement the normal consultative process. So I think that's about the advisory council uh, and offering advice uh, about how they've gathered the views of, of people's interpretation. Uh, I shouldn't use that word uh, because that might make it confusing. Uh, to gather views on people's opinion of that accounting standard and to advise the board on where to go next. Uh, to develop and approve the IFRSs, that effectively is the role of the IASB, isn't it? Uh, so therefore, the answer to this one by a process of elimination is there is A, uh, to provide guidance on financial reporting issues not specifically addressed in IFRSs. So to be able to go through there, uh, and if there are any issues that arise from the IFRS itself, uh, which are not addressed, so there's nothing to, to help the users, uh, to help the, the people applying those new rules, then the Interpretations Committee come along and help out. So that first example there is A. If we go through there and look at the, the second one that we have there, again, another one of those tricky scenarios there. Uh, which one of the following would not be regarded as a responsibility of the IASB, the International Accounting Standards Board? Okay. Uh, well, what we've got there is the IASB has the responsibility, doesn't it, to publish all the IFRSs. Uh, in order to publish the IFRSs, it would need to go through there and have responsibility for any technical matters. Uh, again, it will get support from the Advisory Council upon those technical matters. It will go through there as well and take any interpretations from the Interpretations Committee and give them the approval. Uh, they have to have the final say on whether or not this interpretation is doing what it needs to do. So you've just got to be careful because what they do not do effectively is see, is it? Okay, They are not the overall supervisory body 
of the IFRS organisations. The supervisory body, that the overseeing body effectively is the IFRS Foundation, isn't it? Uh, the IFRS Foundation supervises all of those bodies and it gets reported to, doesn't it, by the IASB. Okay, so in that example, it is C.